Tonight we focus on education, not the typical education options, but alternative education options. And face it, not every kid is suited for a regular school environment. So if you're considering something different for your child, tonight's show is for you. Coming up in this next half hour of Our Issues Tampa Bay, we're taking a closer look at alternative education choices in Tampa Bay. Hello, I'm Jen Holloway. Our first segment tonight highlights an organization in Manatee County. It's a group that's changing the lives of young women. Since 1969, it's been dedicated to helping girls grow into womanhood, equipped to be contributing members of our community, our society, and our nation. Andy Watson and Stephanie Overtuff join us now. Andy, Stephanie, thank you for being here. Thanks, Thanks for having, having us. us. Tell us about Just for Girls. Uh, Just for Girls is an amazing organization serving the daughters of Manatee County. Mm -hmm. We've been around since 1969 offering before and after school and out of school programs. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have an alternative middle school located in Palmetto. And in 2012 we just opened our charter school, the Just for Girls Academy. Right now we're serving uh, kindergarten through fourth grade and we're adding a grade each year progressively until we're K through eight. Wow, you're growing. There's, there must there be are. a need for this alternative education. There's definitely a need, mm -hmm. absolutely. What is the typical, I know they're not all the same, but mm -hmm. what, are, what are some of the children who come to your school? What, what are their backgrounds? Uh, many of them have faced challenges mm -hmm. either in their families, uh, mm -hmm. society, culturally, economically. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them are from uh, lower income or families that are facing different challenges and difficulties. Uh, so they're varied. Uh, across the spectrum. Sure. So not only are you giving them an education, but you're you're giving them life skills and, and improving their lives in so many ways. Absolutely. Stephanie, you graduated from Just for Girls, is that right? Well, I attended Just for Girls from the ages of about 7 to 12 or 13. Uh -huh. I went to the after school programs and to the summer um, program. My mom worked and so okay. my sisters and I went there as a place to kind of keep us safe, make sure we weren't <laughs> out getting in trouble or anything during that That's time. Right. So. And did it change your life? It did. You know, I I still remember going there and the activities that we would do. I can picture some of the ladies who work there, remember mm -hmm. their names. Um, they really showed a, a genuine interest in us. Mm -hmm. um, we did lots of activities as far as putting on plays during the summer. I remember we did Alice in Wonderland and I was <laughs> the white rabbit. Um, I can talk fast, so I guess that's why they, <laughs> they wanted me to do that. But it was just, it really taught us a lot of life skills, built yeah. self-confidence and, and um, things like that. So That's yeah. That's great. And how many students do you have there total now? Uh, right now we have 94 girls that are enrolled in our charter school. Mm -hmm. We have about 50 girls that we serve in our alternative middle school. We have just under 500 between our three centers in our before, after, and summer programs. Wow. And what kind of classes do you offer these girls? Uh, we offer the basic classes that are offered with our core curriculum is uh, standards that are set by the state, mm -hmm. uh, but we also offer a great music program, mm -hmm. we offer technology programs, we're integrating sciences, and hopefully we can get some great new playground equipment and bring our outdoors up to code and get a little more physical education in there as well. Mm -hmm. Are you state funded? How are you funded? Uh, the academy is mostly funded by the state and the county. They provide funding for a lot of families that are in need. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the charter school is a free and public charter school available to girls in Manatee and neighboring counties. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of our funding is from private donors and foundations and uh, organizations and businesses that we've got a long-term Those donors are so with. important, aren't they? They are. We would not exist without them. And not just for financial support, but our, our volunteer base, mm -hmm. our lunchroom help, and you know additional classes and programs for those kids. We really, really depend on the community. And do you offer scholarships? We do. Uh, thanks to our donors and the generosity of the community, we offer scholarships for all of our girls that are in need. And for those that can pay, it's about $10 a day okay. or $50 a week. Okay. And you offer them a great environment, keeps them out of trouble. We and, do. And a good learning environment with loving, caring uh, 
uh, mentors as well. Absolutely. That's great. Stephanie, I'm so impressed mm -hmm. with you. You graduated from there, but now you give back to Just For Girls. Tell us about that. I do. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, I got reconnected with Just For Girls at a business networking group that I'm a part of. And um, I just learned about all the different things that they they do now versus back then, you know, 20 mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, with the alternative school, that's the one that really hit me, what they're doing with those girls. Mm -hmm. um, so this year I sit on um, the corporate board and then volunteer, like Andy mentioned, with a lot of the events and the fundraising, mm -hmm. just trying to make sure they can keep up those activities to help the girls out. Sure, and yeah. you are a great mentor as well because you are you own your own business now. Yeah, we do, and you know, a lot of the things that I learned going to Just For Girls, a lot of the life skills and problem solving and, you know, you're playing games with other kids and you get mm -hmm. in conflicts and things, you have to learn how to resolve that. And it actually helps now with dealing with our employees and, and running a business, and so yeah, really? absolutely. Mm -hmm. What is it? Is there a screening process? Can someone apply online? Can they call you? They can call us anytime. There really isn't a screening process other than working with parents and guardians to determine the best course of action to fit the individual girl's needs. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, support from the community. I know you're getting a lot of support, but you, I want to help you spread the mm -hmm. word. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to get you guys on the show. I do a lot of stuff with the Pace Center for Girls, and I didn't mm -hmm. know about you guys. So I'm glad you were there. I know at Pace, I've heard them say many times that uh, keeping a girl in uh, juvenile or, or wherever is very expensive as compared to, like you said, $10 a day when you're putting them in school. Absolutely. Have you had a lot of success stories come out of there? I'm sure you have. We have. We've got some great success stories. Uh, one of our former students was uh, having a really difficult time being bullied in school, uh, oh, middle school right. and later into uh, elementary school. We find a lot of those peer groups that end up putting pressure, and especially for girls, there's so much pressure from mm -hmm. societal influences to, to be what they see coming at them and projected from outside. And right. so uh, it's really important for us to nurture them into leaders of their community and who they need to be. And it's such a, a tender age as well. You know, that's when girls are so impressionable at that age and their hormones are starting to go. Absolutely, and <laughs> yeah. Yep. And we found that uh, these risks and the risks that girls are, are exposed to, um, there's a lot of resiliency programs and abilities to cope and you know, bounce back from these hardships and these challenges that they've dealt with in their personal life and their mm -hmm. academic life as well. Uh, but our teachers are at the core of our academy and they are wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't just teach our girls, they really nurture and empower them. That's mm -hmm. a big deal. It is. Well, God bless those educators. I wouldn't have the patience to be one. But you bet. Yeah, it I'm takes a lot of work. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure thankful for them. Good. Too. Yeah. Stephanie? I was just going <laughs> to add, I mean, with the alternative school, that's one of the things that really hit me as far as, and I know Pace does a lot with things like that as well, mm -hmm. you know, helping the girls learn about this um, prevention of pregnancy, drug abuse, yes. all those things that they're being hammered with at school, yeah, and yeah. then the challenges that you mentioned just going through adolescence, and then they might come from a home with a single, single mom or uh, facing works. financial challenges, mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. And so it's like they're getting education at, at a regular school, but Just For Girls is providing that other... Um, and nurturing. Yeah, helping yeah. them see there's a different path that they can take. They don't have to stay on that same course as their parent who's right. struggling or whatever. So that's something that... Life. That I That's think is good. Great. Andy, Stephanie, thank you both for being here. Thank you for what you're doing in the community. And thank you for supporting Just for Girls as well. My thank pleasure. you for, having, Thanks us. for having us. You're very welcome. Coming up next, we'll find out more about a program that's in Pinellas County. This program is keeping young men and women on the right track. Stay with us.